Ladies and gentlemen, a story of a small group of survivors who are on a journey to find a special ops team that's supposedly making their way to a haven that holds the cure to the cross virus. Carefully narrated by Harold Lore, the true leader of this group. Except, we all know that's not the story we're seeing. What we're seeing is a story of a small group of survivors who are being misled by a psychotic manipulator into finding a specific group of crossed that had taken his precious lorry, and now being led through a town in hopes of finding another group of crossed that will give Harold the opportunity to take out a threat, a whore. Also, Harold's leg is getting better, even though it's still in pain. It's just sad, really how trusting this group is, how easy it was for Harold to use these good people like a carrot on a stick. Almost gave him second thoughts. But good thing he'd already set his plan into motion. Now it's up to Harold to stay sharp and find a way to buy time for the cross to catch up to them, if they found the can of beans he left out last night. How about Harold sharing a bad experience from eating beans with his packed meal, Darwin. A request for an inconvenient restroom break from a little food poisoning. I mean, knowing how it's usually Darwin that's the one carrying Harold around, and how easy it is for Harold to get underneath Darwin's skin, Darwin can't stand the fact of bringing Harold along to begin with. Surely the last thing he would want is a warm stream of Harold's shit going down his backside. <laughs> How easy it is to control this group when seeing Darwin desperately trying to get Rick into finding a place for Harold to take a shit. A jelly bean store for Harold to do his business with nothing left in it. Now's the question of how long Harold can stall them for with food poisoning. If Rick and the others were willing to wait long enough for Harold to concentrate. To focus. Push past the others outside and their noises, sighing and praying past the wind, the repetitive sounds, the swaying trees, the metal sign popping, just enough to hear the familiar sounds of something human. It's too bad that Darwin had to ruin Harold's concentration when demanding for him to hurry up. Harold has no idea how the fucking idiot managed to survive this long when knowing how the cross have pretty good hearing. Regardless, after he's done with the whore, Harold could not wait for Darwin's suffering death. I mean, Harold did make a promise of showing Lori and everyone else that he can do it better. Must have been a good 22 minutes that Harold got with his act. And even though Harold was worried that the delay wouldn't be enough, that his efforts and planning was a bust, he heard it. Nearby was the sounds of smashing. If this group wasn't so worried about his bowels, they would have heard it too. Harold was picking up little noises, obvious signs of human activity, wrecking, destroying, and getting closer. Now's the next part of Harold's plan, which is finding a way to divide this group. And that opportunity came when passing by a pharmacy down the block. Now with all these buildings pillaged and vandalized, highly doubtful that there would be anything useful. Only someone who was desperate and ignorant enough would try to find something useful in there. Which is why Harold began making the suggestion of checking out the pharmacy. Maybe there's 
something in there for his stomach, and possibly something useful like aspirin and bandages. You know, it's amazing how much trust these people put into Harold. Assuming that his radar senses are telling them that it's safe enough to seize this opportunity, everyone all in but Harold's pack mule. <laughs> Harold's going to enjoy making Darwin suffer. So with Rick and Amanda running to check out the pharmacy, nobody realizing how it's Harold who's the one taking charge, just need to wait until Rick and Amanda are about 50 yards away. Until... Harold's radar senses would pick up something. Shh! There! In the distance. We're not safe. The crossed are here. And they're coming. That was when Harold gave both Rick and Amanda the sign before having the pack mule and the whore run to the nearest building. The cross are coming. And they have no choice but to stay low, keep quiet, and wait it out. Here's a fact about our storyteller. Harold Lore is a survivor. He knows this world. You see, one time Harold spent 26 days hiding in a crawl space, on his back and crammed into a tight space, surviving off of eating house spiders and sucking condensation off of pipes. And guess what? He's still here. This cross group is on the hunt for them. That can of beans they found is a sign that there is fresh meat that is in dire need to be violated. And they will not stop searching until they find what they're looking for. Which is why the cross will smash everything that's in their way. The store that Claire, Darwin, and Harold hid in was a convenience store that had a trap door that led to a hidden cellar. If these people only knew. If they only knew. How they were like flies entering the spider's web. God, Harold could not believe it himself how all this easily worked out. Now, just gotta separate the pack mule. Get him away from the whore as she watches the cross from a dirty small window at the far end. It looks like Harold's stomach is at it again. Darwin best drop him off near the stairs to do his business. Uh-oh. Looks like a little had came already. And how Harold loved watching his pack mule throw a silent fit. Harold having fun and playing with his food. Here's another funny story that Darwin will surely love about the cross. This one time when Harold saw one of the cross fucking a tree frog, it was literally the funniest damn thing watching the dick come in and out of the frog's mouth like it was trying to catch a fly. So Darwin doesn't like Harold's dirty stories. What would he think when Harold tells him that the cross are probably raping Amanda right now. And the moment before Darwin could respond was when Harold covered Darwin's bitchy mouth with a torn apron and ran the broken glass bottle into his neck. Shh. And just as Darwin gargled his last few breaths before his pathetic life wasted away, Harold wanted Darwin to know how much he enjoyed Amanda and how he loved it when she let him come inside her. Of course, that wasn't true. Harold didn't like using Amanda like that. It's just that Darwin did suffer like Harold wanted, which is why he wanted to have Darwin take that with him before burning in hell. Funny, how Harold thought it would be the whore who would be the first one to go. But no matter. Now's the moment that Harold been waiting for. And Harold, sharing his sadness because of how Darwin doesn't like him, despises him so much that he decided to go upstairs to hide. But, you know, Harold did want to say that he loved Claire's smile, her lips, and if he could give her a kiss. And yes, it's been so long and so lonely with this Lori gone and Rick, but you see, it would make Harold so happy if he could have a kiss and bite those lips right off her face. And just like that, Harold attacked Lori, her screams muffled with the apron and that broken glass bottle to ensure her obedient silence. Pinned to the ground, helpless, and outside is the crossed, the crossed, Claire, the crossed. 
here's what's happening. Rick and the others are good people, but they're idiots for bringing in something like Harold. His leg is healing, and pretty soon, good enough for him to move. And now, Harold just wants some pussy before he takes off and leave. And all Claire has to do is be the good little whore that she is, and lie still, and keep quiet, and keep asking herself if it's worth it. Is dying by the cross outside worth it? Even if Claire is revolted by Harold's dick, is it, Claire, truly worth it? And that was when Claire stopped struggling, being a good girl for Harold Lore. You know, for such a big whore, that wasn't so bad. It's not like Claire doesn't do this all the time. Harold just finds it amusing how Claire is still denying her nature. It's not like he hears her and Rick going at it every night, and surely with Darwin too. Harold relishing Claire's tears, telling Harold how she was once raped. Well, now she's been raped twice. And how pathetic it is to see this act. Harold knew Claire liked it. She enjoyed it. Every minute of it. Why is it so hard for her to admit to her nature? What makes her any different than them out there? Even smacking her on the head with the other end of the glass bottle, Claire still refuses to confess. But if we're going to be honest here, Harold has a confession. That he lied. He's not going anywhere, and he's got all night. And all of it being too much for Claire. She fainted. Harold could care less if the horror wanted to take a little rest. With a cross down the block, and seeing how it's getting dark, all part of Harold's smart planning, and the amount of time for Harold to have fun. Harold found it interesting that he fucked Claire three times when she was out, and it's no fun. But for some reason, he's still hard and can't get his dick down. But Harold wanted to make an apology. In fact, he owes Claire a huge apology that all this time he thought that Claire was just a whore. But Harold being honest, that was just an excuse for him to justify all this. Harold just wanted Claire to know that he doesn't think she's a whore anymore. And Harold knows and understands how hard it is in having sex with an ugly old man instead of someone like Rick or even Darwin. Which is why Harold has something special for Claire, something she'll definitely like. And Harold happily showing Claire what he did, that while she was out, Harold decided to take the liberty in removing Darwin's face so that Claire would find their time together more satisfying. Now even though Harold still thinks that Darwin is a huge asshole, he's got to admit that he looks far more handsome. And Harold, wearing Darwin's face, with good looks and personality too, excited for another fuck, and the absolute terror within Claire. That was when Harold's face would be kicked in by Claire. In a fit of rage, Harold lashed out on Claire. All his anger, the rage, the driven bloodlust to make Claire suffer. Harold did not expect the immense pleasure he felt when bashing her head in with a piece of tile flooring. He loved it. The drive, the superhuman feeling, going feral on this woman as he kept bashing her face in, and turned on by the idea of her parents, her loved ones, watching from up above, watching her suffer and die in the worst way possible. When Harold was done, those lips were still calling out to him, drawing him in with their siren's call. After cutting them off with a glass bottle, Harold loved how they fit smoothly. It was unlike anything he had ever experienced, like velvet. Even beyond the grave, Claire would give Harold an orgasm. Harold's blunt opinion, if Claire was not a whore, she should have been.